Welcome back. Slain NYPD officer Jonathan Diller will be laid to rest on Long Island today. Thousands of people from all over the country paying their respects this week, including former President Trump. We're driving down the road, and it felt like we were driving for miles, and there were men and women in blue. They were going for such a period of this. I said, that's a lot of people. It was a long blue line. Right? Right. It was a long blue line indeed, and that's respect. They have respect for this family. They have respect. Let's bring in Fox and Friends co-host Brian Kilmeade, who's live in Massapequa, New York, and Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman. Brian, good morning. Such a sad day. Yeah, uh, hey, good. It really is. Uh, and Rachel, thanks so much. The man by the president, the former president's side, was Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman. Bruce, thanks so much for being here Thank today. You, Brian. That was a uh, pretty extraordinary. President Lanza MacArthur Airport, the former president, comes down into Massapequa and then goes in to the funeral home. Could you give everyone an indication what it was like on the inside, how he was greeted by the family? So um, the president came into the funeral home and Stephanie, uh, Jonathan's widow, uh, and he went into a private room. They were there for about 10 or 12 minutes. They were having a very, um, very emotional conversation about Jonathan. And then Stephanie uh, took uh, President Trump to the casket, and they had another conversation there. They were discussing about Jonathan, what was he like, uh, what kind of sports did he like, what kind of food did he like, just a discussion about what Jonathan was like. And then uh, Stephanie introduced the president to the family members, and he paid his condolences to, to each of the family members. And then they stopped him and asked him to sit down and sign a mask card. And he did that. He sat down, signed the mask card. On the way out, Jonathan's grandmother stood up and said, would you give me a hug? And President Trump grabbed her. They embraced very tightly. And the grandmother had tears coming down her eyes. And then something happened I've never seen at a wake before. All the friends and family of Jonathan gave him an ovation. They started clapping for the president. And uh, it was very warm. It was very beautiful. It was very moving. The president could not have been nicer. So today is going to be extremely sad, the culmination of uh, uh, five straight days of mourning and trying to piece this all together. What's going to be happening inside St. Rose and Lima Church? Well, uh, there will be a mass, uh, I believe. Uh, I know you typically there isn't a mass during this time of the year when it's yeah. uh, before, the day before Easter. Uh, yeah. Commissioner Caban of the NYPD will be speaking, Mayor Adams will be speaking, and I, I assume a family member will be speaking. Right. But I've been to many of these, as you have, Brian. This is always the toughest day for the family. You have two days of a week where right. you're, you're really interacting with people and uh, it really doesn't hit right. home. And then today at the funeral and the burial, it, it's going to be a very tough day for the family. But people here who have never met him, feel as though they lost a family member. There's going to be tens of thousands of police officers, NYPD, Nassau County. Big difference the way Nassau County treats their police officers and the way the NYPD does. I mean, you live on the border of where this all took place of Queens and Nassau. Can you describe that? Well, we're a very different community. Uh, we are not a sanctuary county, so we don't have a migrant program. Uh, we have a very patriotic county. We're home to a lot of military veterans. We're home to a lot of cops, a lot of firefighters. This is a very patriotic uh, community that loves law enforcement. We love our cops out here. Right, big difference. And lastly, Bruce, uh, for the family, they feel like this is a tipping point. They let all these officials know, you have my sons, you have my brothers, you have Jonathan's blood on your hands by your soft on crime policies. Could this be a tipping point in this process? Well, could this be, could, could the worst days be behind us? Are they beginning to understand what's going on here? Brian, I certainly hope so. I'm feeling it out on the streets. People are saying, we're fed up, we've had enough. Criminals have more rights than victims. Uh, we're tired of the lawlessness. We want to back the blue, and uh, we want to get back to American values. So I, I think the American people, and I think the people here in the metropolitan right. area have had enough. And Bruce, I just wanted to let everyone know, snipers above the building, because anytime there's a big congestion, a, a big group of police officers together, they got to be watched. You see, understand what's happening over here. And if we just clear out right behind us, that's what this is all about. Jonathan Dillon, who lost his life at the age of 31 years old. Back to you guys in the studio.
Thanks. Well Brian. done, Brian. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you, Brian. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.